with their plates cracking, getting no. S crack in the middle. The, the thing that I learned from Joyce is when you do plates, when you do a horizontal surface, you actually turn the ball on the side. And the reason is that I've been wedging, so all of my particles, which are flat little particles like this, when it's up like this, they're lined up like this. So if you turn the ball on its side, those particles are like this, and they slide like this, so you're much less likely to get that S crack through the middle. I was losing 50% of my plates and I'm, my big platters. Literally half of them would crack. As soon as I did this, I only lost one, and it's because I forgot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom, and I'm going to taper it like this. So it's closing that in. Do it this around. So this is how I make it round again, and close that up. So now the side is the bottom. So this one will not crack. Ninety, pretty sure it's not going to crack uh, during that after it's been trimmed. All right. So centering, same same process, different day. You gotta move it, you gotta move that clay. And you'll find when you turn it on the side, sometimes it's really hard to get it get that first center. It's gonna fight you because it's not you're, you're working against the um molecular at the molecular level. Is that, you know, this little thing it's pushing it up, down. If you haven't figured it out by now. You know, really, everything needs to be really well centered before you make something. You know, if you're still, and I've got a, two advanced people who, had, who took the pottery class when they were freshmen, and now they're taking it, they're taking their second semester as seniors, so they've got two years of unknown practice. So they really had to relearn all everything, recenter. Um, you know, I've got one student who still can't throw more than about six inches tall, but she'll be she'll be fine by the end of the semester. She'll be doing the big pieces. So all right, so I've got it centered. So now I'm actually going to start the process. I want this base to be about that big. I want it to be low and wide. So as I push out, I'm pushing here with this part of my hand. There's kind of a bump right here. I'm going to push that clay out. And like that little, like when I did this little piece, I'm focusing these three fingers. The little finger is kind of in the way. I'm going to get this out low and wide. And you could say, hey, there's a plate there. I'm done. It's really thick. Oh, that's such a good plate, man. So that's about a little over an inch thick. So here, let's go slow down. I'm going to do the same process. And when I do a larger one, I'm going to open it up differently. But for this one here, I'll just use my fingertips. Put that well down in there. So now that's about, you know, about half an inch. And then I'm going to bend these fingers and pull towards me. And this is the hardest part, is to keep this stable. So I'm really locking on and digging this thumb in as I come out. Try to keep that bottom as... What will happen is you get going and all of a sudden you, get, you go deeper and deeper. And by the time you get to the outside, you've created... It's real thin and that's... I catch myself. This is, there's a bump right here. There's a bump right here. And we'll fix that in a minute. I want to finish opening this up. That's the hardest part for me is opening it up. That's where I go. Well, you'll see that I've got my, I'm really resting, I'm really pushing against here with my wrists, and my thumb is, I'm holding on to dear life with my thumb out here as I bring this out. Like, what kind of, pro, like, equaling the pressure as you're pulling and. No, not pulling. all the pressure's from the inside. I'm not actually pushing hard, but I'm just keeping this, just I'm pushing against stable. my, yeah, I'm keep, keeping this fairly stable so that as I push my th fingers out, the thumb doesn't move. So I'm literally thinning it right here. So, so there's the beginning of my cylinder. So now the key to the plate is all of this mess in here. So you come back in and doing it at 3 o'clock, I'm going to move this back and forth. Okay. And this is just fingertip stuff. Right now I'm just, I just, my fingers are bent a little bit like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and get this leveled out. Cool. And then the most important part is use your rib. <laughs> I use this is what I use the wooden rib for a lot. Oh, the sponge did that. Nice shot. So working again at three o'clock at a real 
steep angle right here and I support it with my hand, I'm going to just, I'm not pushing real hard, but I'm compressing it enough. And I'll go back and forth. And this again, I don't do anything to the rim until I get very, get this exactly where I want it. So there's the bottom of my plate. And then there's the rim. I'm done. I just like making a, a low wide um, coffee cup. I'm going to come right here. Normally it's 3 o'clock, but because it's so wide, I want my elbow in, so I'm going to come out on the outside here, and I'm going to bring the rim up, and I'm going to keep the rim fat. I want that rim to be twice as thick as I want it when it goes out to become the, the rim of the plate. And you know why? Because you're going to stretch it. Yeah. You're going to severe. I'm going to go from here to here. It's going to be such a severe stretch that as it's at the, the rim is literally going to get half that thickness when it gets out there. So, so we're going to cut under here, stretch from the inside, lift, check the rim. So let me clean this so you can see where I'm at. So it's a big shallow bowl right now. And there's a line right there, that transition. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take that bowl rim and I'm going to lay it out flat. If your clay is really soft, you can't make as flat a plate as if you're working stiff. And this is pretty soft clay. So I'm going to stop when I know this, right before I think it's going to collapse. So See, go. mine always split. They split? Mm -hmm. You mean like here? Mm -hmm. Part of it is you're not working quite thick enough and you're not wedging well enough. It's your, your, clay, your clay will only split or crack if you haven't wedged it really well. Will you show us how you wedge? Huh? So I'm going to go all the way down to where that line was, and I'm going to start pushing out with my finger. The outside, all I'm doing, this is just support. I'm not doing any uh, compression. And I'm going to lay this out. Aww. And I call that a plate. You know, that's for like when you go to a potluck and you really want to heat the food on. That keeps it from pulling off the edges. So. <laughs> that's a Thanksgiving yeah, plate right there. Yeah. So, well, we're going to go flatter. So, I'm going to go here. So, but I'm always, I go all the way down where I stopped with the rib to start my pressure. If I start here, then I'm going to get this bump. So I'm all the way down with my fingers. I'm not pushing very hard, but I can feel what I'm doing. And then I'm coming here. Now, you want to know the real secret to a great plate? And this right here is the final thing I do. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and clean underneath it. Plates are a pain because they're always below this. I'm going to get this out of the way. I would have never thought of doing that. Take this off. This allows me to come under here and take that excess clay off. Yeah, because you're always fighting with that, uh, with this thing in the way, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I've already made, I mean, look at the floor. I've already made a mess, so what's a little bit more water on the floor as you're working? Hmm. Huh. So now that's ready. So when I cut it off the wire, and I won't cut it off the wire yet, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to leave this off for this last step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to finish the rim off with a, with the um, wooden tool. It takes a little bit of practice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my hands up. You know, I've been I've always had my right hand on the outside and my left hand on the inside. I'm going to actually use this on the inside, and I'm going to support with my right with my left hand. So what, it's, what I'm doing is this is going to hold on, and I'm just going to lay this down on here, and just that's going to square this up. I'm going to push with my fingers up against that edge, and you'll see what happens. Get this there. Sorry, people. <laughs> so I'm going to just very carefully lay this on here, and then take it off. And that's all I did was just gave it. I, it took the finger marks out of that rim. You work on it too long, you're going to collapse it. I found I, I, I really, really work on it. I cut right here, and that's where that's the weak point. It does get a, it does have a double line. I don't like this. See, there's there's two spots. There's a spot there and a spot there. I haven't done plates for a while. And that's, I'm going to use that as my excuse. I'm going to just push. I don't want to leave it for you all to have to trim. So we'll just push down a little bit there. What I'm going to do though is, if I don't have my hand on the outside, that's when it collapses. And then just round out your rim. 
So again, it's not a flat, flat plate. I could go, if it was a little bit stiffer clay, I could go a little bit lower. The only way you get truly flat plates is if you're doing cast, if you're, if you're using plaster and you're casting them. You know, all those dinner plates that you get with Walmart that, that are super flat, those are machine made and they have, only, that clay has so little water in it and it's using um, 20,000 pounds of hydraulic pressure to stamp those plates out. On the wheel, we can go a little bit lower. So it's, 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 This is going to collapse it. Stop. Quit messing with it. <laughs> it's beautiful. So we're doing this. We're trying to get too flat. If you try to get too yeah. flat, you've got to have this, um, what's called an angle of repose. There's a certain point. Angle of repose comes from a story my dad read, my favorite author. It's that if you look at a hillside where all the rocks are, at a certain point, rocks roll. But at the, right at the angle where they stop rolling, they found that perfect balance. That's called the angle of repose. The same thing here. The clay will go to a certain point, and it won't go any farther down, and then it always goes. And uh, you, you've got to learn whatever clay you're using, what's going to work best for you. So when we're trying to make a set that matches, and you said that, that doesn't happen to you terribly often, but is there some tips you'd give us to? Weigh the clay. Definitely you want to use the same amount of clay as possible. I work when I'm doing those, I'll either have a ruler or I'll have a pair of calipers and I'll, I'll work them out to that measurement. So I'll, the next plate will be, you know, I'll, I'll do this, I'll have two calipers, I'll measure the inside and know how big that is and as I'm laying the rim out, so that each rim might be a little bit different, but then they're all kind of the same size. But no, there's, there's, again, I'm not, I don't make sets. People have asked me, I said, I just don't do dinner sets. It's, right. it's not uh, on my... <laughs> It's on the thing that I need to do before I dye this. 